A young man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he asked, literally, he asked for permission to commit zina. Okay, so this is, you know, intimacy with the opposite gender without being married. He's asking Rasulullah for permission for this. And so the people around Rasulullah they started, you know, telling him, meh, meh, you know, uskut, shut up, man, right, shut up. And what did Rasulullah do? Please pay attention, because these are the times that we're living in. We're living in times where you're going to hear about this more and more, okay? So, even though the people were saying, be quiet, Rasulullah told him, come here. Come here. And so he came close to Rasulullah and then Rasulullah, he told him, sit down. And then he began to ask him a couple of questions. He said, would you like that for your mother? And the response was, La wallah. He said, La wallahi. And then he said something that they, that they say in Arabic to express the love that they have for Rasulullah. And he said, May I be sacrificed for you. And then Rasulullah said, Would you like that for your daughter? Again, No, wallahi. May I be sacrificed for you. And then he went on to ask him, uh, he, then he said, people don't like that for their mothers. And people don't like that for their daughters. And then he went on to ask him, would you like that for your sister? He said, la wallah, may I be sacrificed for you. Rasulullah Islam said, people are like that. They don't want it for their sisters. And then he said, would you like that for your aunts? And in Arabic, you know, the aunts is on the masculine side, on the feminine side, he asked him about both. He said, La Wallah. So at the end, Rasulullah said, neither would people like that for their aunts. Rasulullah placed his hand on him. And then he said, O oh Allah, forgive him his sins, purify his heart, and guard his chastity. When a therapist or a counselor who's trained reads this hadith, they should understand, they, they should very quickly be able to relate to exactly what happened here from a psychological point of view. Number one, notice that Rasulullah brought him near. Okay? He brought him to himself. All right? And this is what we do in therapy. The first thing, the first couple of sessions, you just want to get to know the person. And then you begin to ask him a series of questions. We call this motivational interviewing. All right? Motivational interviewing is to cause the change within the person. Why is that important? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yughayru ma bikumin. Hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah doesn't change the condition of people until they change what is in their own selves. So it's what the counselor has to do is try to get him to change. You don't make it a lecture session, but you ask him questions to make him realize you have to change. And this is what Rasulullah is doing. He's asking him simple questions. He didn't, he didn't do any spiritual bypassing. Oh, you need to pray. How can you ask me that? I am the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't you see the ayat in the Quran where it says, Wala taqribu zina? He didn't do that. He came down to the level of the person and he dealt with him where he was. And this is what we are trained to do as therapists.